What is up everybody? Tegan here with High Point Scientific and today I'm here to talk to you about Celestron's new addition to the amazing StarSense Explorer series of telescopes. That's the 8-inch and the 10-inch Dobsonian. Now, if you were with us back in October, we released a video about the StarSense 130DX and the 102, and I concluded that after using this scope out in the field, it truly is one of the best beginner telescopes out there because it is so easy to use and it's so simple to find objects in the night sky. So Celestron has up their game as far as aperture. The 8-inch and the 10-inch StarSense Dobsonians are some serious upgrades as far as light gathering capabilities are concerned. But Tegan, are these Dobsonians really worth their size? I heard they're not really portable. What about collimation? I heard collimation is a pain. And I'm not going to be able to find any of these objects in the night sky. I don't even know the night sky as it is. Behold. I'll be using the StarSense 8-inch Dobsonian in my backyard in Portal 7 Skies to observe as many objects, deep sky objects, as I can in a 15-minute time span, and I will also be using the 8-inch Dobsonian to view the faintest deep sky object that I can. And through this, hopefully we can put to bed some of these concerns. But before we start, let's go check out how to use the 8-inch Dobsonian. Setting up the base is simple and the entire process takes anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Once the base is assembled, you don't really need to disassemble it, which is extremely convenient for taking the scope outside for a quick view. The included handle is extremely, well, handy. The tube comes fully assembled with a handy handle as well. Load the scope onto the base, making sure it fits firmly onto the bearings. Then you can screw in the tension knobs to either side of the scope. Tightening and loosening these allow you to adjust tension in the scope's altitude movement. You can also loosen and tighten the bolt on the Dobsonian base to increase or decrease resistance or tension in the Asman movement. To attach the smartphone dock, simply slide it right into the adapter located on the top of the scope by the eyepiece and tighten it down with the two thumb screws. Next, we're going to talk about how to attach and align your red dot finder scope, which is relatively important, especially if you plan on manually searching the night skies without the use of the StarSense Explorer smartphone app. It is quick and simple. Remove the dust cap from your focuser and insert the included two inch extension piece and then slide in your eyepiece preferably your 25 millimeter eyepiece. Simply slide in your red dot finder scope into the finder shoe and then tighten it down with the two thumb screws. Now we need to calibrate our red dot finder with a view through our eyepiece. Again, this isn't crucial if you plan on using your StarSense DOB with the StarSense Explorer app. You want to do the red dot alignment during the day. Aiming your scope towards a parked car, a stop sign, or telephone pole will work wonderfully. To move your scope, grab hold of the handle at the front of the tube and move it manually to your desired position. Turn your focus knob and achieve a nice focus on your telephone pole through your eyepiece. Now you can align your red dot finder scope. Remove the tab sitting underneath the battery, power on your red dot finder. Use the knobs on the bottom and the side of the red dot finder to align it over the telephone pole. Point it directly at the object you see through your eyepiece. Now the next thing to consider is collimation or the alignment of your primary and your secondary mirror. Precise collimation is really important, especially if you want very detailed, crisp views of the planets. If you're just viewing deep sky objects, it's not hugely important, but it's always nice to see round stars in your eyepiece. The StarSense Dobsonian does come with a collimation cap, but we highly recommend using a laser collimator. The Aperture Laser Collimator is a great option and it makes this process super simple as do the aperture collimation knobs. These are an option for purchase at the product page. So we have the base assembled, we have the scope attached, we have the red dot finder and your eyepiece all calibrated. Now we're going to talk about the StarSense Explorer app. After you've downloaded the StarSense app, you're going to want to enter the code given to you in your manual packet. Once downloaded, you can follow the StarSense app quick start guide, which will help you attach your smartphone to your phone dock. This process is incredibly simple and it's one of the main reasons why we're such big advocates of this beginner system. In fact, this entire app is extremely impressive and comes chock full of features. Once this is finished, you can start your viewing session. But before we get to that, let's go through some of the app features. 
So first off, the apps push to object finding main feature is what makes the StarSense Explorer series of telescopes so fun to use. It basically works like this. Once you've completed the quick start setup, the app is going to prompt you to point your scope towards a clear patch of night sky. This will give the app your exact pointing location through a process known as plate solving. From there, you can select nearly any object in the night sky to view, and the app will tell you exactly where to point your scope in order to view it. Again, this is considered a push to system, and this part of the app is really what separates the StarSense Explorer series of telescopes from anything else out on the market. By clicking on the object's name at the bottom, the app will provide you with a bunch of information about the object you're viewing. We recommend checking out the observing tips to get the best out of your views. Additionally, you can do a custom search on nearly any object in the night sky. And this is exactly what we're going to do for this test. I've written down 16 deep sky objects that I know are located directly above. I'm surrounded by trees, so I don't want to waste any time trying to search for deep sky objects that I know may not be visible because they're blocked by either trees or my house. So I'm going to see how many of these objects on my list I can view in a 15 minute time span. Let's begin. All right, so we are in my backyard and I have my eight inch StarSense Dobsonian sitting right behind me. I have my list of 15 different deep sky objects that I plan on viewing in a span of 15 minutes. After that, I'm gonna see the faintest deep sky object that I can view through the eight inch Dobsonian. I'm gonna set a 15 minute timer. Let's begin. Okay, so my second object is Messier 13, the Great Hercules Cluster. I can clearly see it in my 25 millimeter wide field eyepiece. Some of the brighter stars within the cluster are actually resolvable. If I had my 10 millimeter eyepiece out here, I'm sure it would be an even better view. Okay, so this next one is my 10th deep sky object. It's called the Blinking Planetary Nebula, or NGC 6826. I wasn't exactly sure if I was looking at the right thing, but it looked almost like what Uranus or Neptune would look like in a 25 millimeter eyepiece. Very small, almost star-like, but it stood out amongst the other stars as a very small turquoise, almost disc. Very cool. Okay, so my 15 minutes is up. Messier 51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, was the last object on my list. It was behind the trees, so I went to the Coat Hanger Cluster in Aquarius, I believe, and it was a beautiful open cluster. All right, now I have spent the past 15 minutes viewing as many deep sky objects as I possibly can, and we'll talk about all of that in the studio here in a moment. But first, it's time to see the faintest deep sky object that I can view. I will be turning off my light over here, so it may be hard to see my telescope, but I will report back to the camera as I'm viewing my objects. Okay, so what I plan on doing is starting with something mildly bright, such as Messier 13, and slowly going upwards in the magnitude scale, which is actually dimmer, and we're gonna see the dimmest object that I can view, starting with Messier 13, a magnitude 5.78 cluster. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, Messier 13 is a beautiful sight through a telescope, especially under dark skies. This is one of the brightest star clusters, star globular clusters that you can find in the night sky. So next we're gonna check out the Ring Nebula. Okay. 
So the Ring Nebula is a magnitude 8.8 .8 planetary nebula. It has a high surface brightness, so it's pretty easy to spot, and it looks exactly like what it says it sounds like, a small ring. Now, in a 25 millimeter eyepiece, it is pretty small, but very visible. searching for nearly an hour for an object over magnitude 9 there wasn't much in my sky available besides some extremely faint planetary nebula around the magnitude of 12 or 13. All right, so let's wrap this up in the studio and talk about some of the results as well as my overall thoughts and feelings about this entire experience out in the field. Have you ever been doing something and you just don't want to stop because it's that enjoyable? Yeah, that's the star sense Aiden Stobsonian. So I was able to view 15 deep sky objects in a matter of 15 minutes if I was under darker skies and weren't blocked by houses or trees. I know I would be able to view more than that. As far as the faintest deep sky object goes, aperture does help, but in Bortle 7, you get what you get. Magnitude 8.9 was the faintest object that I could see. Messier 56, a globular cluster. And I am perfectly okay with that because that was a hard globular cluster to spot. What has always gotten me so jazzed about the StarSense Explorer series is how simple it is to use. And I can't, I can't emphasize how simple it is to use. The Aperture Dobsonian Carrying Case makes this thing ultra portable. The StarSense app makes this thing ultra usable and user friendly. The aperture collimation knobs make this scope extremely easy to collimate. This was simply a great experience once again. If you haven't checked out our review over the 130DX, it's very similar to this one. If you have any questions at all over the StarSense Explorer series, please let us know in the comments below. We'll be more than happy to assist. You can also reach out to our non-commissioned product advisors at High Point Scientific, and they will also be more than happy to answer any of your questions. We really hoped you enjoyed the video, and we thank you so much for tuning in. Clear skies.